Hey, how's it going? Um, welcome back. Um, today I want to share a little bit about a topic that I feel like um, has become, it's become less stigmatized to talk about, but I feel like, especially if you're still a member of the church, I think sometimes it's something that we don't talk about very much and can be uncomfortable or um, maybe sometimes even embarrassing to talk about, and that's um, going through therapy. So I wanna talk about a little bit about my experience with therapy and kind of my perception of it growing up. So I think growing up, I always saw therapy as something that only people that had like very deep um, emotional or psychological or mental issues needed and um it was very hush hush it was very like oh did you hear you know this family's son or daughter they're in therapy you know something really bad happened to them i noticed it was one of those things that uh, people would gossip about kind of like through the grapevine unfortunately so i kind of just avoided the topic or the concept of it overall um uh, because I felt like even though I definitely didn't have the best childhood out there um, or just growing up, um, nothing, there, I can't say there's like one like traumatic event in my life. I'm like, oh man, most of the time, uh, most days of my life growing up, it was just like, oh, this is a crappy day. Um, I guess, you know, like it's not like horrible, but I don't know, I was pretty unhappy overall, like most of my life. In the church, the dialogue around therapy is also pretty hush-hush, and um, the prevailing um, concept or like dialogue uh, around it is that, you know, as long as you're practicing the gospel, you don't need therapy. You know, the gospel can heal everything. The gospel fixes everything. And, you know, I agree to, to that to a certain point point like living the gospel and its principles can help and enhance your life overall but it definitely isn't a replacement for like professional help and i think that's an important um point to remember about um like therapy because like even the handbook um, the handbook was just updated for the church and in the handbook it says you know uh, it talks a little bit about like blessings and like uh blessings of health and it says yeah uh, you know blessings blessings of health um are great uh, however you should also seek medical attention um if you're receiving like a blessing of health it shouldn't be a replacement for actual medical attention and i think that's very similar to therapy like you can go to church and you can read your scriptures and you can pray but if you have ongoing issues um you need professional help so yeah once i on church they were talking about depression and they're like what should you do if you have depression and people were saying oh you, you know you need to pray more you need to read the scriptures more you need to be more helpful you need to smile more and this went on for like 10 15 minutes and nobody nobody said therapy so i raised my hand and i said you should probably go see a therapist and everybody was like oh yeah everyone was like yeah you should probably go see a therapist i feel it's kind of strange that it's still kind of like one of those words that is um scary to say even at church so when I started working full time, I got, you know, insurance and stuff. And one of the cool things about my insurance is that it covered like all mental health, like for free. And I was like, oh, like maybe I should try that because I know there was like things about me that I want to understand better. And I, I, need, I want to like um, see if things were normal or not, because in my mind, what normal is is my experience but I don't know if that's normal to a third party or to the outside someone looking on the outside I don't know what normal looks like I just know my experience and I mean there's definitely like things that concern me about myself you know I do uh, I knew I I dealt with a lot of anxiety especially when it comes to uh, relationships when it comes to dating I like I didn't really start dating till I was 27 years old and then even then I definitely have like an anxious attachment style and just I just worry about things all day 
So I decided to look into a therapist. This was about one year ago and I found this uh, woman. She seemed pretty smart and she seemed like someone that also has had patients that were LDS. So she kind of understands the LDS perspective and maybe religious perspective. So yeah, I just started talking with her and um, I just told her like, hey, I've never done therapy. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't even know if I need this or want this or what this is about. And she was pretty nice about it. And she's just like, yeah, you should just come in. Let's just talk. We just sat down and we just started talking. She just started asking me about myself and asking just about my life and then things that maybe I want to improve or I want to see better in my life. And a lot of it was about being more confident, especially in like relationships or dating or just taking more risks uh, overall. And she did a, some type of assessments on me. We did a couple of assessments and we just decided to do week to week for uh, like the first couple of months. So eventually she told me that some of the things that I like, I definitely experience or I have like um, characteristics of was like just obviously there's like anxiety. She, was also, she also said like complex PTSD and complex like trauma. Um, and I didn't understand like these terms um, because I don't know, they're, they're very strong terms, right? Um, so I looked them up and one of the things I learned about, especially myself, is that even though I didn't have like a single traumatic event in my life that happened that, you know, like, like haunts me or like I deal with on a regular basis, I personally dealt with like trauma just like my whole life. It was just a like, daily thing and it just became very normal. And the ways I definitely cope with it is just shutting down and just like bottling everything in and then just like becoming very anxious, very like jittery. And I was just, I think I was uh, just really scared of the world and people and really distrusting. And looking back, uh, I mean, I've gotten much better, but it did affect a lot about like my social interactions, um, going to social events. I would freak out about it. Like I said, I didn't start dating until I was 27, mostly because I was scared of just talking to women in general. I was also just very cynical, much more cynical back then. Also pretty jittery. I noticed uh, like something about myself is like, when anyone would say my name or anything, I would like just jolt, you know, I would just be like, oh, like what's going on, like everything, because I was always on edge. Um, because I think that's how my whole life was. Unfortunately, um, due to how I was raised and my household environment, I was always on edge. I was just, just scared, I think, um, because it was just a hostile environment. So I learned that these things weren't normal, but that there are better ways to cope with them. And um, just a lot of it just was mind framing. It's just framing things and knowing that what I am feeling isn't like life threatening. These are, you know, they're very concerning feelings, especially anxious feelings, but that doesn't mean my life is in danger, you know? And I, I know that sounds kind of funny, but like, I learned that uh, with anxiety, you know, uh, humans develop anxiety to avoid danger, avoid, you know, threats, you know, like a big bear. Another thing I also learned in therapy is just like figuring out what's effective and what isn't effective. I would ask her like, what do you think about me making this decision? And, and she would never tell me like, this is a good or bad decision. She just like, uh, would say like, this sounds effective, this doesn't sound effective. Another thing that had helped me was just process guilt. I feel like I dealt with a lot of guilt um, growing up due to things, um, just like especially cultural things in the church. I felt bad about um, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy enough, and just processing a lot of that also. I've been doing therapy for about a year. Now I probably see the therapist maybe once a month. I don't feel like I need to see her as often because I don't have as many things that I want to even talk to her about because I feel like I can handle most of it. But for the longest time, it, it was for the first couple of months, it was like week to week and it, it did help me because there's just so much I want to talk about and just get feedback on. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that I don't feel that therapy has to be for 
people who are just experienced like this one traumatic event in their lives and you are on the brink of like your life falling apart no um i think most people if not everyone can benefit from a good therapist and that's the thing you have to find someone who um understands you and also understands kind of your values and your morals if you have the opportunity and the privilege to be able to go see a therapist and you haven't um i would look into it i think one great thing about it is now that everyone you know, a lot of us are quarantining or isolating at home for the most part. Um, you know, we're experiencing a lot of uh, feelings of isolation and loneliness and, you know, and that extends into other facets of our lives. So I think it's important to be able to talk to uh, talk about these things with someone who is a professional um, because, yeah, uh, we're, we're like 10 months into this um, pandemic and it's totally normal to be having these feelings. It's not um, it's not abnormal and it's normal to want to express them and to um, process them in a healthy way. I hope you guys learned something in this video or at least enjoyed me sharing about this topic. If you feel comfortable sharing your experience about therapy, feel free to comment and share those. Um, I think the more we talk about this topic, the better. Promoting conversations about this makes it less stigmatized and more open for others to um, get help if they need it. Hope you have a great rest of your day and um, stay safe out there. Bye!